In this story, we follow a man who is a bit of a creep. He checks into a strange hotel and starts to enjoy watching people a little bit too much. Written by her creation, we follow this man as he checks into room 101. These walls have eyes. If you've checked into the Hotel Nondormiant within the past ten years, I've probably watched you. I like to watch. The details of how I got here are unclear. I used to work as a photographer, the kind that jilted housewives hire out to catch their husbands cheating. My last client, a woman who talked fast and chain-smoked even faster, employed me to catch her husband in the act with his girlfriend at the Hotel Non Dormiant. Her hair was built up so tall with hairspray that I worried it would ignite each time she lit up a cigarette. I started to tell her I'd never heard of the hotel. And while that was true, I was suddenly overcome with the realization that I'd always known about it, even been there myself as memories quickly resurfaced. I sat on my grandfather's lap in a room there while Grandma got ready to go to the theater that one time they visited. I could remember receiving a drink at the bar years later from a fellow who appeared somewhat menacing in a medical mask. I didn't even have to tell him what I wanted. He just knew. Anyway, I took the job, agreeing to catch her man doing the dirty with some other lady. I checked into 101 on the first floor while they were all the way up top. I discreetly snapped photos of them hanging all over each other at the bar, but never heard back from the wife. The lovers checked in again a few weeks later and never checked out. I punched a small hole out of their wall and found them bludgeoned to death in bed. The man's eyes were couched out lying on the pillow beside him. It was then that I developed something of an obsession with watching. I don't just like to watch, I have to watch. And what better place to watch than a hotel? Over my extended stay here, I've created a notable amount of looking holes openings so small that they are barely noticeable to the naked eye. But I know where each set is, carefully hidden, looking into bathrooms, bedrooms, even some on the 17th floor. I don't visit that one anymore. I know what you're about to say. Yeah, sure. I'm a creep. Whatever. It's technically true that I am a voyeur, and yes, I am looking for people fucking, but it's not the physical act I'm really interested in. Sure, I don't mind the visual of two people really going at it, but I'm really looking to see their closeness. I want to feel the intimacy between them, really get in there feel that skin-to-skin -skin contact with another person, even if from a distance. People find me strange, intense, off-putting, so I don't get much in the way of physical contact. That's why I like it here so much. People come to hotels to fuck. Sometimes I stay up for days at a time, subsisting almost entirely on an alternating mix of uppers and downers, just watching. There's so much to see here. 
I've been up here for two or three days now, wandering the halls, dragging my open palms across the walls, feeling the energy of the people inside. Pure ecstasy. Visiting my looking holes, barely larger than pinpoints, yet granting me full access into the intimate lives of strangers. Back in my room, a nearby door slams shut. New guests checking in next door. Just my luck. No time for that scheduled nap. I pop a blue pill in my mouth and chew it to a pulpy mash. My mouth dry. I wash it down with some stale whiskey. Moving silently towards the wall between myself and the unsuspecting visitors, I gingerly remove the generic framed art to reveal my looking hole. I press my right eye against it, closing the left to get a more focused view. Just one visitor, a woman. I lick the gritty pill remnants from my grimy teeth tongue like sandpaper. The woman reclines on the bed, blissfully unaware of the residue of sin's past staining the bedspread. She looks fucked up, probably had too much to drink downstairs. She pulls a baggie of pills out of her purse, looks like she came to party. I urge my body into the wall as she places a tablet in her mouth, takes a swig of water, and cocks her head back to swallow. She repeats this process with another one, another one, one after another. She's not here to party. She's here to die. The scene is so dismal that I almost want to stop, scream out for her to quit it. But I don't, because this is the closest I've ever felt to someone, the most intimate moment one could experience with another, the moments leading up to death. I crush my body further into the wall, almost painful as I lean the entirety of my weight into the hard surface. I find myself wishing that I could fuse with the wall. If only I could squeeze my eye right through the hole. If only I could somehow get even closer. Her breathing eventually slows. It's clear that there's not much time left for her. If dying has a look, it is in her eye. Her gaze detached, directed far off into somewhere or something the living are not privy to until they meet their end. I sigh deeply, admiring the beauty of this peaceful end, her acceptance of what is to come. Her stare suddenly fixes upon my looking hole, the one through which I observe her, venerate her. She stares through the wall, through me, in her final moments, a loose gasp escaping her lips. Scrambling back from the wall, I rush in to replace the picture frame, grappling with what I've seen. No, the fact that I was seen. I grab another blue pill instinctively, and a light orange one to mellow me out. I crush them both to a fine powder dragging them into neat lines before sealing my left nostril with the pad of my thumb. I take them both in quick succession. My nose twitches, itching, but relief is immediate. But then I see the paint bubble on the wall next to me. Cautiously, I extend one hand to investigate, only to find that the protrusion is full of Something. I lightly jab it with my index finger, recoiling instinctively as the bubble twitches, 
thin parts horizontally down the center. I watch in abject horror as the protuberance opens to reveal an eyeball, glossy and all too real. Its massive pupils dilate in response to the yellow light of the room as it rolls around, adjusting until its focus finally lands on me. Blisters crop up slowly at first, then rapidly, unrelenting, until the walls that surround me trap me or studded with the small projections. I tell myself to turn around, leave, run, but I'm rooted in place, forced to watch as the bubbles crack open all at once to reveal more of the same, more eyes. A viscous fluid running from each aperture, dripping slowly down the walls, pooling into a brackish muck where they intersect the floor. Stomach turning, I tumble over to vomit but nothing comes out. I can't remember the last time I've eaten anything that hasn't come out of a little orange bottle. I straighten my posture to find that all the eyes have fixated on me. Watching me, these walls have eyes, and they're staring me down. The whiskey bottle on the end table, actions miles ahead of thoughts. I seize it, smashing the glass on the edge of the table to produce a sharp surface. I shove it into the wall, puncturing several of the unearthly organs. A repulsively thick fluid splatters across my arm, but the eyes pop and disappear. So I keep going, striking wildly, dragging the jagged glass along the wall to rupture entire rows at a time. My efforts are all in vain, though. The wall swells and bubbles to produce another eye behind which I've destroyed. There is nothing I can do, and I can't focus, can't think at all with all these eyes watching me. I fall onto my bed, curling into myself, eyes screwed shut, hands placed firmly over my face for an extra measure of protection. A deafening crack briefly startles me out of my panic. I remove my hands from my eyes to watch as the ceiling splinters above me, opening to form a chasm. The abysmal pit above me moves, almost like a mouth as it simply orders, do it. Desperate now for some sense of relief, for any end to this, I blindly reach for the broken bottle. I don't even think, I just do. I raise the bottle above my face, in shaking hands before jamming it into my eyes, over and over and over again, wailing in pain, until sight fades completely and my face is obliterated, until I am free from the oppressive, crushing stare surrounding me. A sense of delirious euphoria overcomes me. But the pleasant feeling is fleeting, because I know the eyes are still watching. I know this because of the sounds, exaggerated, nauseatingly moist. I can hear them blinking. 